All right. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Reiki Lifestyle Podcast here with Colleen, as always. <laughs> And we're really excited um, for this episode because we are here with Kelly Jean Badgley. Kelly Jean, if you just want to say hi real quick. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. It's yes. super fun. Yeah, we're really excited for today, having you both and for the topics of the day too. Very interesting. And we're also here with um, Christopher Driscoll. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, Christopher. We're glad you're here as well. So we'll get into their bios. Um, just a quick, few quick announcements. Um, let's see, this episode's going to be released in a couple of weeks. So um, we have a couple of classes coming up. We have our Animal Reiki 1 and 2 and our Animal Reiki Master um, coming up at the end of January. And we also have our next step, our monthly year-long courses starting in a couple of weeks, which is our next step Reiki, as well as our new course, Explore the 12 Heavens course. So again, those are our Colleen and I's monthly courses um, that we teach for the entire year of 2023. So, um, and then Colleen has Reiki 1 and 2, Reiki Master. And Colleen, do you have Karuna Reiki in February? And Karuna Reiki yes. in February. So, um, so you can just go to Reiki lifestyle and check all of those out. Also, we did have an episode that we just released, um, in December that talks a bit more about our next step Reiki and explore the 12 heavens classes. Um, if you want to listen to that and learn more information about it and listen to that on podcast and YouTube and YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you that are listening, we're also, um, we are also uh, releasing all of these episodes on YouTube. So you can see the video format. Um, and then if you're watching this on YouTube, all of our podcasts are released on all of the audio formats platforms as well. So Apple, uh, Apple podcasts, Spotify, you know, all of those. All right. Well, I think that's kind of it for today. You all know where to find us, ReikiLifestyle.com. Um, so I would love to get into, um, our guests here today. So normally I do read their bios, but I think today would just be really fun to kind of mix it up and to um, just have them tell their stories about, you know, what led them to Reiki um, and um, why they're here today, what they're up to. All right. So Kelly Jean, we'll go ahead and start with you. And yeah. also, will you make sure to just say your information at the beginning as well, like your website and all of that kind yeah. of stuff? Yeah. Uh, so hi, <laughs> I'm Kelly Jean. Let's see. Uh, you can find me at, well, my mom and I teach classes in Boise, Idaho. She's kind of like my, I don't know. I ride her coattails. I always tell the students when we <laughs> teach together, I'm like riding those coattails. Um, uh, our website is the peace love, and we have lots of classes and workshops and it's really fun and a Reiki spa day. We're doing the Reiki spa day. Um, and you can find me at, um, my website is kellyjeanbadgley.com, but that's where I do voiceover and, uh, kellyjeanbadgley at Gmail. Uh, you can find me there if you want to email me. Is there anything else I'm missing? Your YouTube channel. Oh, YouTube channel. That's why yeah. I'm over here. The YouTube channel is this ASMR Reiki life. Yes. Awesome. And that's part of the reason that, you know, we were interested to talk to you um, today because we know about your YouTube channel and your work with combining Reiki and ASMR. Yes. So maybe talk a little bit about how, and also we get the mother daughter relationship here. <laughs> so, so, so generational Reiki. Yeah. Um, so tell us just a little bit about kind of like your Reiki <laughs> journey and then what led you to your work in ASMR. Yeah. Um, so I've been spiritual my whole life. I mean, I'm an eighties baby. So I was always questioning, like, what, like I would be made to go to church and I would like throw fits and be really bad in church and not to say anything bad about the church. I was just, I was just bored. Um, I'm trying not to go back too far. So I've been <laughs> spiritual my whole life. I've like, even from meeting a, a, a group in Louisiana, meeting like a witch in like Louisiana and him like 
teaching me tarot and like telling me how he talks to animals and communicates with animals. I mean, like it was very earth based. So I was really interested in that. And then I ended up moving to Chicago and it was in like there I was with these clairvoyant people and then Buddhism and then yoga training and went through that. And then my mom was also spiritual throughout my life too and was very open. We were just very open all the time. And so I guess in, I'm not even sure when it was, I was living in LA and uh, she told me that she was gonna learn Reiki. And I was like, what? I was like, no, that's my thing. Like, I wanna learn Reiki. And she's like, well, once I get trained, then I'll teach you. And I'm like, perfect. <laughs> so um, from the moment that I started learning Reiki and the moment I like put my hands on somebody, it was like, whoa. I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. Like I could, I could feel the energy coursing through my body. It was something that I, I always wanted to be a healer. I always wanted to like have like herbs all in my house and be able to mix things together and heal people. Um, and so from there, I've been practicing Reiki for, I don't know, maybe five, four or five years. <clears throat> and I do everything my mom does. She's a master in everything. She's an LRMT now. So amazing. And so I just, I just do what she does. And she's like, you want to take this? You want to take it? I'm like, yes, 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 yes. I'm just like eating it up. It's really fun. And uh, I learned about ASMR through Chris. And uh, he'll tell you his story. And I didn't know what ASMR was. I, I thought it was kind of weird. I think the first thing that he sent me of ASMR, which means autonomous sensory meridian response. That's what ASMR means. He sent me a video of someone like eating noodles. <laughs> and me and Elle watched it and we were like, what is this? And he was teaching a class on it. Um, and I was like, I don't understand. So anyways, well, fast forward, he knows I'm a performer, I'm an entertainer, I do voiceover. And he really encouraged me to start a YouTube channel. He was like, you have to do this. Like, it's like, this is something new. This is something that people, not that many people are doing, but there is enough people that are doing it. That's it's really, people really like it. People are really attracted to it. And it was a really good creative project for me because I just had a baby. So I was like, okay. Uh, let's do this. And it was hard. And I am a diva. I was a major diva getting back in front of the camera because I'd been behind the mic for 10 years. I mean, I'd kind of been in front of the camera with different projects with friends and stuff in LA. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was a, it was really hard getting in front of the camera. Let me just tell you that self-sabotage is real. Um, and we have videos, bloopers of me, and it looks like a joke, like an office episode where I'm just like getting mad, getting sad, getting tired, getting, I mean, like it's all of it on my face. It's so embarrassing. We get it. We totally get it. <laughs> oh my God. But like always, I, you, there's like this, we've got to embrace our cringe to get in front of the camera. <laughs> that's a, okay. Yeah. Embrace the cringe, embrace the cringe. <laughs> and you know, and that's what I felt when I first started doing voiceover too. I was like, Oh, I sound so weird. And then someone was like, Oh, you sound like a little boy. You're perfect for voiceover. I'm like, great. It's awesome. And then I started liking it. Um, so we started this ASMR channel and it was, it's been such a great learning process, but man, has it enhanced my Reiki practice practice. It's like, it, it's really powerful and uh, people are really drawn to it. So I don't know if that answers your question fully, but <clears throat> it's fantastic. We'll hear from Chris and then we'll get into um, a little bit of like, you know, more about that piece and the YouTube piece and yeah. um, that kind of thing. Yeah. So our Christopher, um, tell us your story about it all. Okay. So, um, I guess the story has to start in a somewhat somber space. So I grew up and my dad was a drunk. That's, that's really where this starts. And as a response to that, my mom kind of found solace in the church. And so we grew up as, as traumatized because of the dynamic inside of my household, but finding this kind of, uh, 
safe haven or at least looking for towards church as a safe space but in my case it wasn't church it, it, I, my mom brought us to church and i ended up experiencing trauma because of church in ways that would be a different podcast episode but i'm happy to i write about in in spaces and things like that but all of that to say i um was a church person but had been traumatized by it and as a result of uh, the field that I chose to uh, study, religious studies, I've been able to kind of make a career out of studying religion and why people do and believe the things that they do, uh, but in a way that was intensely critical. That's the kind of uh, jargony term that we use in the field, but essentially what I mean by that is I was trained to study not just religious things, but uh, esoteric things, anything metaphysical, the things having to do with all of the stuff we can't see, but that might be there on the other side or other sides. I was trained to study all of that, but not believe any of the things that I was uh, studying. I was supposed to listen to the people who are making religious claims or spiritual claims, but I wasn't allowed to believe what they were saying. And so from that, though, it led to a kind of not professional crisis. I got pretty good at my job, but it led to a personal crisis. It kind of, the more uh, I, uh, the more and more that I refused to believe some of the more uh, incredible stories that I would hear or read about from the, based on the research I was doing, the more it kind of atrophied my soul. It just kind of, it zapped any, possibility of me really feeling joy that's kind of where it, it led but from that a kind of reckoning that took place thanks in part to covid i was able to um, begin a meditation practice and from that meditation practice i i realized that much of where i had been like personally thinking about belief and the way that god or the universe or energy works in the universe um where i had been on all of that was being informed by unprocessed trauma that's it in a nutshell a lot of this also connect this clarity connected to my participation in adult children of alcoholics it's a a, a version of the 12-step program that um, is more organized around the codependent dynamics that unfold for children uh, as they're adults, but children of uh, alcoholic and other um, parents who have had dysfunction kind of guide the way that the home operates. Uh, this seems maybe a bit superfluous to what we're talking about, but for me, it was really, really deeply connected to my growing awareness of Reiki and ASMR to begin with, because uh, as a participant in ACA, as it's called, you have to uh, admit that you, you, you're kind of lost and you, you have to um, kind of submit to the idea that there's a power operating in this world. It's usually called a higher power in the program, but you have to submit to that basic notion. And I had spent most of my 20s and all of my 30s not believing in God, not believing in any. I thought it was all BS. And I'm also, I'm not meaning to conflate those different kinds of things but for me it was all of it was bs you know yeah and and i spent so many years doing that um uh, within myself that it it had a whole lot of negative uh consequences for me but the bigger point is that once i came to terms with the reality of a higher power or what have you I was then able to start doing the work that my soul, my spirit, you know, really needed to do, which was to heal. It was it was to do work that um, the little child inside of myself, the seven year old and the eight year old and the nine year old, they were all still there. They are still there now, you know, but I had not let them speak. I had not let them process their uh, pain and, and, and hurt. And so COVID happens and I'm finally able to have the time to begin really, 
you might call, I thought at the time, really strange meditations that were organized around tapping into those inner children that lived inside of me. And so I started doing those and, and through YouTube and the algorithm, you know, the algorithm itself put ASMR videos in front of me because I had been searching for inner child meditations and things like that. And so I clicked on several of them and I thought they were extremely p peculiar. And one of them, Kelly Jean mentioned the one about like uh, eating, I think it's crunchy ramen noodles or something. Part of the subculture of ASMR has evolved into looking for the most obscure triggers. A trigger is the thing that causes the tingling sensation. So looking for the obscure triggers and food sounds, nasty smacking sounds does it for some people. And so anyway, we could talk more about that later, but to make a long story short, I discovered that there was a subset, another culture within the culture, so to speak, of ASM artists, as they're called, that package ASMR with Reiki, or rather, you can think of the opposite too, that package ASMR with Reiki or, or Reiki with ASMR. And the, the best, she deserves a shout out, I'd say, is Luna Nate. She's absolutely incredible. Anyone who's listening to uh, us, please check out her channel. She's, um, in so many ways, she saved my life. And I mean that quite sincerely, because through YouTube, the algorithm, putting her videos in front of me, I was able to have ASMR packaged for me in a way that didn't make me like laugh and turn it off. But I came to realize that there was something about it that was deeply healing. And that's where I kind of have arrived at now is, and it's why I was so um, vocal to Kelly Jean about uh, the, the, the channel and beginning it because I see within ASMR a lot of what Reiki practitioners are doing. This is a healing work. It looks really, really weird sometimes. It does. But what essentially has happened with ASMR is an entire generation, maybe two generations of folks have taken to the internet to do the, the, the kind of thing I was doing. This is why I belabored the, the talk of trauma and healing and all is because that's what's happening. There's a group of kind of we in 80s babies, you know, latchkey kids and other folks whose parents may or may not be around. I'm not saying they're from messed up scenarios, but all of the young people these days are are in a way weirdly more isolated than ever before. And ASMR uh, offers an opportunity to have forge the kind of personal connection that I think is really at the heart of of healing modalities in general, know it like sharing space, right? Like presencing with ourselves and with one another. ASMR does that more beautifully than a whole lot of spaces that young people are are um, inundated with these days or forced to to engage in. So I was super, super interested in that. And from that, I knew through Instagram that Kelly Jean had a Reiki practice. And so as I got more interested in, uh, actually not interested, but as the work of Luna Nate had a more and more profound impact on me through YouTube, right? Like that's, it's crazy that that platform exists and others like it to do this kind of thing. But as I got more interested in it, I reached out to Kelly Jean and then she offered to to give me a distance Reiki session, and that was incredibly pivotal. With uh, my mom, we did it. Yeah, together. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. And so I was in Philadelphia, and you were in Altadena, and your mom was here in Boise, and we all sat down. We weren't even, you know, in a Zoom or phone session. We were just all sitting down and and following this uh, guided thing uh, all at the same time, and. I woke up completely transformed the very next day and made some incredibly significant life changes that I'll leave out of the story for now, but absolutely uh, seismic, you know, in their effect on my life. And I've never been happier since. And it's all because of me, like, 
accepting the Reiki energy and the, and the way that it can impact um, my well-being and, and things like that. So, Wow. Well, thank you both. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to describe a little bit more about, like, go into depth about ASMR um, and what it is. And um, I know, Christopher, you talked a little bit about how it helps people, um, but from like a practitioner standpoint, you know, what all of those kinds of things too. Sure. Also, I want to say your mother's name is is Jenny oh, yeah. Benson. <laughs> yeah, was yes. Jenny name? yeah. <laughs> we all know her. So when she says her mom, we know, we know Jenny. So she's so cool. Whoever's listening. Um, she's really cool. Amazing teacher. I'm just so thankful she to is. work with her. Yeah. Um, so Chris, you, he touched on a lot of different things with um, ASMR and Reiki. And one thing, you know, whoever's listening to this podcast and knows Reiki, you know, you have the distant symbol, Han Shazeshonen. And I, Reiki has, is not bound by time or space. You know, when we were first looking at Reiki videos, just Reiki videos online on YouTube, you have mainstream Reiki. She's, she's so amazing, you know, and she had said that she just had this quick inter introduction and puts her hands up and people are really attracted to that. When Chris first contacted me on Instagram, he was, he, he was, I, I was like, who, we're both from Louisiana. We're both from Shreveport. And I'm like, who's this person from Shreveport giving a lecture at Harvard? Like what? And so I messaged him and I was like, what's this all about? Chris, who, who I didn't even, I knew Chris, but I didn't know Chris and we had all the same friends anyways. And so I messaged him and he messaged me and he said, yeah, I'm doing this lecture about this and this and this. He's like, but I'm really interested in weird things like how energy moves and aliens. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is not jam. This is like, <laughs> and so he got back to me later and he asked for a distant session. And I was like, he asked for a practitioner in Philadelphia. And I was like, I'm not sure. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna like say, do you want a distant session? Like, I'm, and so we got that. But what's, what going back to the ASMR and what Chris was saying, um, what I talk about on my channel <clears throat> is that with ASMR, first of all, you have you have sight. So not only are you like beaming Reiki, but you also Reiki is not bound by space or time. So the energy is moving. And we all know through COVID that we are all connected in this energetic way online from anywhere in the world, no matter what time it is, especially on YouTube, you can put on something on YouTube. And it's like they might have done it years ago, and you're still like getting something out of it. So there's no space and time there. But with the sights and the stuff that you're doing and the sounds that you're making, I like, I'll use my drum, I'll use crystals. I talk about um, using crystal sounds because crystals hold a frequency, they hold it. You can set any intention into a crystal. And if someone's hearing this clicking sound of a crystal, that frequency, that vibration <laughs> is connecting with them. And what I think um, is really, 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 really powerful for me, and um, my, and one reason I think Colleen, you connected with me in Sedona, um, and you're like, oh, it's because it's the Karuna, the toning. Um, I think that really is my favorite part about doing the ASMR because it's a different, it's a sound trigger. Um, but I not only can I use that sound trigger, but I can also use a crystal or I can use sage. There's like different triggers that um, people connect to. Um, and that's what, that's what made me be able to start doing the ASMR was I knew that I could do toning in a different way because not everyone's doing the toning, you know? I do it in sessions now, um, but it was able, it was a way for me to combine my voiceover career, my voice talents, my voice skills, whatever I have with Reiki because it's so powerful, because it changed me. I went through like a dark night of the soul with my baby. <laughs> and it was like Karuna Reiki and chanting Rama was like the one thing that like, I could feel my chakras aligning. I could feel the vibration in my body. And I really think that people 
connect with that on the YouTube channel with the sound, the sound triggers. Chris will probably talk more in depth about the tingling sensation that people get. And he'll talk, he'll, he can talk about it, but I, we, we both agree that we feel like it's a healing modality. When you get these tingles, like, do you ever hear like people harmonizing and you get tingles or you'll like, there's that part in Moana when she's like, I have walked across the ocean to find you. And the, the I wind. just got tingles every, right now. <laughs> I know every time it's like, you get those tingles. It's yeah, like yeah. a sensory meridian response. It's like, yeah. and so um, I think that's what this channel is doing for a lot of people because we get a lot of comments of people being like, it's helping my 12 year old daughter. It's like the only thing that, you know, is helping her with her, pro you know, her issues and like just different stuff. It's, it's fascinating. It's, it's beautiful. I'm so thankful, but Chris, you could probably discuss well, more. Just, just for people that have never heard of ASMR, it, basically you're there's it's, can you explain? It's like very subtle sounds that are, yeah. Kind of yeah. close to the microphone you're going to be better at explaining it than I. yes am. he's so, more technical on that that's good yeah and just <laughs> add one more thing can you say the name of your youtube channel again yeah um it's this asmr reiki life it was kind of based on that podcast i got the inspiration from the podcast um this american life with all those inspiring stories and so we were running up a hill really hard and i was like let's just change the name to this asmr mm -hmm. <laughs> Ricky life. So that's why we, we so the, so ASMR, what is it? A little bit more of the basics. So in a in an instrumental kind of crass way, it is most days the third most searched for item on YouTube. And YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world behind only Google, which you know which owns google YouTube. owns youtube yeah and so we're when we're talking about asmr even though we don't yet have a full picture of what it is we're talking about one of the most popular online phenomena in existence today so that had me interested in again i'm interested in like the things that are happening that we can't see and then how people are dealing with the whether or not that stuff is real and how they figure it's real, that kind of thing. So this was a, a natural interest for me. Uh, but from that, as an, an example will be really helpful, I think. So in my case, the, the clearest cognate I have in my own history to what ASMR, what's happening in ASMR is I remember, I, I literally do remember getting a haircut when I was maybe four years old, maybe even younger. And we went to the same hairstylist and she would, we'd see her once every month or every, however often, but my little four-year-old self would look forward to that because there was something about the woman. I don't remember her name now, but that the closeness that I would experience from her, like uh, my head near her bosom, so to speak, not, not to get weird about it. I don't mean it that way at all. This is something that's completely, um, Kind of above board is my point, but the feeling of nurture is what's cultivated in an ASMR moment. I'm not. There are examples, many, where people take it in a in a weird, creepy direction. That exists. That does. But that's not what this. That's not what it is. What it is is that feeling when a loved one or or hairstylist or when you were young made you feel like you were important, and there was something about that experience that was so significant for you that it it brought chills to your body. That, so that's in, in the most basic way, the chills or, or, or when your spine tingles, but not in a way that's harrowing, not because you're afraid of something, but because you feel, I don't know, connected to the rest of us. Or, or We don't know why it happens. We, st we literally still don't. People speculate that it's part of our, our uh, reptilian kind of brain and physiology that used to help help mother monkeys pick the uh the dirt and the flex of whatever needed to be picked off of the baby monkeys that's one thing that's speculated about why this feeling here for those who are just listening i'm making a plucking 
motion into the camera, that is a very specific trigger. It's called plucking. Nobody knows why it is that that extremely weird phenomenon would induce a physiological response in the viewer. And as a scholar, I think that is freaking incredible that a person over here, like Kelly Jean was saying, completely asynchronous, right? Like time and space are not respected by the, this energy that's being transmitted. And I think that's absolutely incredible that someone can film a video or do something 10 years earlier and have it somehow the energy reach through the technological means, reach through the camera, so to speak, through, I don't know, uh, however that works, and create a physical reaction in my body. That blows my mind. It still does. But th that is what's happening in ASMR. And then the, the culture of it exists, you know, like online cultures, uh, no matter the, the, the topic, they kind of... Uh, percolate up and, and come into some sort of um, sense of self or identity. And now that's been one of the most amazing things. I think Kelly Jean uh, would agree with me there. There's a genuine community that is formed through ASMR. And then you have your little pockets where these folks are interested in one kind of trigger or a certain set of triggers. The other folks over here are interested in yet another set of triggers. And then ASMR Reiki is essentially one of those little subcultures. There's a, it branches out, and if you think in terms of a Venn diagram, there's lots of different cultures that overlap within this. But ASMR Reiki is the one that I thought it obvious that Kelly Jean ought experiment in because of all what she said already, her her experiences and her training and her expertise in. in you can sound. see why he's good at. Um, persuading someone <laughs> all this like scholar knowledge it's really like I'm just like I could ask him anything I mean, he needs to be on jeopardy seriously and I don't know if we said actually um Christopher you're a PhD and associate professor of religious studies or religion studies um correct can you pronounce the name of the university yeah yeah I teach at Lehigh University okay. in, in Bethlehem Pennsylvania and it, it, there I I study religion and culture, but I, what I really focus on are the, the, the things that people believe and how those beliefs impact their environments and then how their environments impact their ability to believe this or that thing. And the irony is I'm really good at talking about how that plays out with other folks. At least I, I thought I got pretty good at it but I was really bad at it in terms of myself. And so the, all of the story I, I shared earlier is really how I came into an awareness, I guess, that I needed to apply the, the tools of my trade to myself and it, it's been fun. And he's also um, Reiki too. Okay. Mm -hmm. My mom taught him. Mm -hmm. So he has the Reiki energy and uh, he, gave his friend a Reiki session in Switzerland mm -hmm. for the first time and it was really powerful so yeah it was shout out to David <laughs> yeah in case he's listening to this another scholar <laughs> another scholar <laughs> may or may not be listening to this this uh podcast yeah. <laughs> okay so I have an admission that I am, I was actually really glad to have you both on because I was like, oh, well, here are people that you can ask about this question. ASMR can make me a little uncomfortable. I'm sure you've heard that. Why, what's going on? Am I just uncomfortable with the sensation? Like, do, is there healing within me that needs to be healed? So talk about that. Wonderful question. Yeah. And you're not alone by any means. And I experienced this as well when I first got uh, intellectually curious about ASMR. I was like, what the hell are these people doing? You know, it's, there's some really, really weird videos out there. Well, so and, I'm not uncomfortable with the, I'm not uncomfortable with like the, the act of ASMR. Like I understand mm -hmm. that it's super healing for a lot of people. People talk about how amazing it is. And as your both of your stories that it was super healing for you. So it's not that it's actually the sensation and the, the, the 
hearing too. So I'm curious about that piece of it as well. Like I, the noises make me a little um, uncomfortable. And I, so I'm just curious, like, what is your, your take? Why is that? Is that a me problem? <laughs> but I'm, cu- I'm curious to know like what noises have made so- you the the close noises with the microphone the especially the I think you called it smacking noises I don't like that okay all right so there's like you were saying the subsections that some of them people are drawn to some of them yeah. like on the drum Kelly Jean I'm like oh I like that noise and I don't I try I'm a voiceover artist I can't stand smacking like okay. I, 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 I edit that out when I have audition, like if I'm doing any kind of project audition, whatever I'm doing, I'm like, get it out of there. Like I can't, people will be like, and I'm like, ah, that's not my thing. I, okay. I bring in Reiki and I bring in my voice. And Chris is always like, I don't know what triggers people actually. I just am a creative person. I'm just creative. I'm just doing a Reiki and I'm being creative. And Chris um, is my editor. He edits the videos and he was like, your voice is the trigger. Got like it. Colleen did an invocation. Her voice is what's bringing goosebumps to her body, like the images and drums are great. And crystals are pretty, are pretty cool too that. And sometimes like even just a little bit of this. Yeah. And I don't mind this because I like, that soft one. sounds and i'll use selenite and it to me it sounds like crickets okay you know so it is about finding it's about finding like I, one of you said like that's my jam like ET, it's about the energy moving like that yeah. kind of world yeah yeah so yeah. if i feel uncomfortable with the feelings that it's giving me does that kind of mean that there might be some places that I need some healing in, you know, that why would that make, you know, I feel like I, and Mm -hmm. I'm processing this as I'm talking to you both. So this is not something that I've thought about before, but I'm also wondering if that tingling sensation, which I don't mind getting the chills, like you said, in that Moana example, like, oh yeah, (laughs) loving that. So, but I'm just wondering if like the idea that the, that the sensation that it's giving me in my body makes me uncomfortable is that like a place that I maybe need healing in? I, th- I think that what we can say definitively is that we don't know. Mm-hmm. ASMR it, in a clinical kind of way is still very much understudied. I mean, it's new anyway, but folks are just now maybe 16, 17, 18, beginning to take it seriously. And now folks are doing studies on it, but those, those studies are still, um, uh, new and and underdeveloped so we don't have a real answer to what you're asking i speculate though that it it takes on the quality of any kind of social interactivity it, asmr hinges on the ability like i mentioned earlier to be present and it, and for me this was fun because i'm in my head a lot i have i struggle to be as present as i even want to be uh, with with other people and all sorts of different occasions but in order for the triggers to really work, even supposing you're at the right spot or whatever, it, for it to work, you have to really be present. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes being present with other people is a wonderful thing. And other times being present with other people is way too much for any one of us. And so add to that how not everyone is operating on the same kind of wavelength or frequency, you know, not to be judgmental, I'm not making a hierarchy of it, but not everyone vibes with everyone else. And so I think part of what you're describing, I would chalk up to that, it could be that person, not the trigger even necessarily, you're just not vibing with that person. And I I certainly have examples of that. The artist, it could be the person that I've watched, since I've been doing this, I've watched a lot of different artists and there's people that are really amazing. And then there's people that I'm like, I I can't, I can't, I can't go there with them. I can't. That really resonates with both, with what you were both saying, because especially being empathic. And I think in Reiki, we get a lot of empathic people that 
that and like that it might be Kelly Jean just as the artist and, and even describing them that way as an artist um, and also being present in my body. So there's also sub maybe some places that I and the social and in, in anxiousness, anxiety piece, Christopher, that you were talking about that that can happen to me. Um, pretty easily as a lot of empaths describe or as you described and that presentness and sitting through that feeling um, actually might be really healing in in the long run of um, feeling that in in your body and then also just finding the right right person for you that's really Mm -hmm. interesting I never kind of that's why I was so excited to actually ask you both that question because mm-hmm. I was like, what, what is that? Um, and I know it's deeply, profoundly healing because we hear about it in Reiki classes. We hear about it in these communities all the time. And so I know that piece of it. And it was like, well, what, what is it about me? That is the problem here, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's really interesting to hear both of your perspectives on that. I always think it's a wonderful question to ask, you know, the, the introspective, uh, reflexive, like, what can I bring to the table or what can I adjust about myself to be more present? I, I just personally think that that is a question that not enough people ask often enough. But at the same time, you know, supposing that adversity builds character or muscle memory or both. That doesn't mean we should be at the gym all the time either. So, you know, like recognizing that, yeah, maybe there's an opportunity for growth. Yes, always, you know, but at the same time, do I, do I need to grow right now in this kind of way? Do I like, I just did a bunch of other stuff over here in my life. And that's, uh, I think important to, to remember too, that it's, it's not, um, it's not ASMR. I mean, it's similar to Reiki in this regard too. You know, it's not asking anyone, anything of anyone specifically. It's, it's there, it's doing its thing. Um, but it's, it, it maintains a, a a healthy boundary between it and the, whoever the the client or the person. And I think too, like, because I didn't start out doing ASMR, I do, a lot more, I incorporate a lot more of my Reiki practice in everything I do. do. I've even used like different meditations that I would use in a Reiki class, or I would, I talk about what Reiki is, you know, I, I love doing the symbols and talking about the symbols and where I'm going to put them on your body. And it's kind of like a guided meditation, but with a little bit of a gentle sound that's what I like. I do what I like because that's what I know. And I'm an artist. And so I'm a, I'm a creator, I'm like a creative person. And so I'm just like, kind of just letting, letting it happen. But, um, well, and I liked when you, so for those of you that are listening, she had kind of put her hand close to the camera and, and drew the symbols like that resonated. So I really appreciate you both. Are you talking about that? It's like also finding people who you who you resonate with and healing is always a balance right you go through these and cycle and spiral you know you go through the times where you are healing and then you kind of can have a little bit of a break and then you you know you come back to the same things you know as this the spiral is is trending upward (laughs) to find the right doctor the right practitioner you gotta like research and find the one that's work that works for you yeah Well, I think I only have a very surface um, idea of ASMR, and my original understanding of it is that it is a, um, it's sound, and so most of it I've, I've associated with videos that have particular sounds and focus on the sounds in the video, and then as you are talking about some of even, even this, that your hands going close to the camera and coming back, and then you've been using the words um, trigger, can you kind of explain some of like the specifics of, of what you mean by that? It, you know, take me a little bit deeper than my surface awareness of the videos that I know are specific, like you say, ASM artists. 
um, that that really resonates with me that I know there are some that I can listen to and some that I'm just going to scroll right past. Mm -hmm. So um, if you could describe some of the, the actual actions of ASMR too. I could give, Chris can describe it, but then I could just give an example, a small example of what it feels like. I mean, it won't be the same as the way my mics are set up because <laughs> I have those like the mics, but I could give you a little bit of Reiki ASMR to see what it feels like. Great. Yeah? Yeah, great. Do you want to talk a little bit, Chris, before, or do you want me to just dive in and then? Yeah, I'll jump in now. And I think that's a great idea to give an example. So a trigger is um, the term for whatever the um, sensory apparatus, you know, whatever is happening in to your ear or to your eye, essentially, from the experience. Uh, but examples are a soft spoken voice. Um, added to that soft spoken voice repetition of the words is another specific trigger. Um, a, a more obscure trigger would be to watch someone do something seemingly mundane, like uh, decorate a Christmas tree, for instance. Um, personal attention is a, a whole style of ASMR where the focus is to kind of in a role playing way, make a make the viewer feel important uh, for lots of and this runs the gamut from like childhood recreation scenarios to boyfriend or girlfriend or partner kind of scenarios to doctor um, exams and all, all sorts of different role playing scenarios. Uh, and so the the greater the recreation of whatever the original like haircut in my case was whatever that first experience of feeling nurtured is what's going to induce the the greatest response in, in the the audience at least that's how a lot of folks think about it um visually and i'm sure kelly jean will will do some of this but tapping that's also auditory, of course, but tapping and hand movements in front of the camera, hand movements um, that are off camera, but your body is still visual enough so that the person knows where your hands are or can speculate, you know. So um, in a lot of cases, you might treat the camera that's filming as a person's head just for kind of point of view or perspective. Um, and and much of that induces uh, the sense of closeness and the sense of, of nurturing presence. And then there are also the, the, the crinkly sounds that are about, often come with, with eating, you know, weird things. And um, there's another style, a hugely uh, popular style of ASMR. It, I, I might mangle this word, but it's mukbang or mukbang. It's a style that is popular mostly in um, South Korea, where um, what's presented is a feast. The person, the, the person on camera will I don't know, spend a, a week's worth of money on preparing a feast, and they will eat and eat and eat and eat. And there, there's all of these trig these triggers I've already spoken of uh, in are included there, but also there's the I guess the um, sense that you're somehow able to live vicariously through that experience too. So that's that's kind of a brand new space. Not the phenomenon not, is not brand new, but the popularity of it is is newer. So one of of the places that I've associated with ASMR is in even some of the videos that Robin's daughter watches, and we watch together with. Um, creative projects, for instance, that they will, you know, teach a craft. And while they're teaching the craft, every sound like the scissors sound is there and the, the glue moving across the paper is there. And so each sound when they fold the paper, there's that sound. Mm -hmm. So I guess that would incorporate a lot of different aspects. 
Mm -hmm. uh, yes. ASMR. I love that you bring this up too, because I love sound and I come from sound and I, I live in Boise now, but I was in LA for 12 years and I had a loop group and we did ADR and background sound. And it's like, you work with like, you work in that realm of like Foley artists where they're like, you know, doing stuff with sand and paper. And, and I, when I first started doing this, I was like, wow, this is like everything about ASMR Reiki is like combining all the stuff into a video that I'm just doing, I'm just doing myself and creating it. And so I'm always like picking things up and I'm like, oh, what does this sound like? You know, I have like these earrings that I got from, I don't even know if you could hear this, but I got these earrings from like Fred Meyer that I was like ch testing out and I'm like, oh, they have such a, oh, I dropped it, but they have such a, can you hear that? Is it too light? Oh, but they're like these little earrings and they have this like great jingle jangle and you know, I'm always picking things up to find sound. And when I was doing the loop group, you know, it's background sound. So basically like two actors are in a coffee shop and that you hear the actors, but in the background you hear all this like, all these people talking. Well, that's the loop group coming in doing all the background sound and improvising. And so I, I'm always hearing sounds and people and backgrounds and stuff. And so I think that that's really interesting that you bring up the glue sound and all those different sounds, people have been triggered by these things for a long time and just didn't know it. <laughs> there, there's a whole other genre, subgenre of unintentional ASMR. And so people, I'm sure that they make a, a sizable income, in fact, re reproducing Bob Ross painting demonstrations and, and, and soft-spoken uh, gurus. Uh, from days of, of yesteryear, you know, they will get presented in, on YouTube as an unintentional ASMR experience, too. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so I can show, I can do a little bit for y'all to see, you know, at this, I'm trying to see this where this camera is on my computer. I have a, a nicer camera that Chris is like my tech guy and so that's one of the hardest things that we've learned is just the technical side of it there's so many like pieces to creating something comfortable for people but a lot of times I'll use my hands and I talk about how it you know this is beaming Reiki and sending the Reiki energy and people really like I don't know if you can hear much on my mic but so I'll, I'll do the sound and sometimes I'll and I'll draw a symbol very slowly. And I'll place it on them. And then I'll do a say hey And I'll place it on them. And I love doing the different Karuna symbols. I always tell them that you're just going to get your body ready to heal. I'm on a deep cellular level. No. So, And then sometimes I'll grab a crystal and I'll show the crystal with rose quartz. Something I got in Santa Fe, maybe I'll talk about it. And 
just do this and sometimes I'll chant with this. And I'll say rum. And I like to do a selenite and I talk about like the visuals of stuff. So like selenite's really healing and clearing. It's what I use in Reiki sessions all the time. I'll clear auras with selenite and you get really close to the camera. And then I'll usually chant a tone with that and I'll clear. This is one of my favorites. And you're just feeling relaxed, feeling the Reiki energy flow through your body, letting it settle in. It's kind of like that. I try to make it. I try to make it soothing because I am real particular about sound and smacking. I need it to be, I'm, I'm like the diva, right? I'm like, I need it to be right. And Robin, it's not gonna work. The, to your earlier question, you know, about is this kind of off-putting? Do I have an aversion to this or, or, or not? You know, the line between a, a adequate or, or positive trigger and being averse to that sound is very thin also that's part of the creative artistry of it you know is this uh, the selenite wands which is so for the folks just listening kelly jean at the end of that was just rubbing two selenite wands together the 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 intensity with which she does that though will determine whether or not that sound induces the the asmr response or if it is completely off-putting and makes the person changes the channel or whatever immediately. Yeah, I, I liked that. And so that's really good information to have is that you just have to find somebody that resonates with you, literally. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and Kelly Jean, you're on mute. So yeah, I really, cause I enjoyed that. That was relaxing. I liked the noise of the crystals. And, and so that's um, a really big awareness. And I'm sure to people that have, come into ASMR in different ways, like some of the eating, those are kind of, you know, the ones that <laughs> we saw your face, Kelly G, when like, Christopher no. was talking about the, well, the one where they eat the feast and <laughs> I can't, I can't, I, I can't even like, no, I'm sorry. Like even whatever is everybody is, but you have oh. to find what resonates with you. And so that is, um, really interesting and you know i'm sure my my phone is listening to me so now i'm going to get all of the you know algorithm is going <laughs> to put it up and but i i really i really enjoyed that so um and for those of you listening she also did a lot of hand movements that were towards the camera um that were and drawing the symbols that were really nice and and relaxing about how long are the videos like I know I've seen some of them that are an hour. Are they generally shorter? Yeah, um, I I do. Right now, our schedule is an hour video on like Mondays or Tuesdays and then a 30-minute-ish video on Thursdays. Um, that's kind of where we're at. And, you know, a lot of times people come to the channel and to ASMR, Reiki, or sleep. And so we've kind of been doing more of the sleep videos on Thursdays. Um, and it's just soft sounds and symbols and Reiki energy. And it's, it's really, it's really beautiful. I think about the people that have contacted me that I know personally that, um, I didn't even know they were watching and they're like, your videos are helping me so much. Like, it's like, and one, one woman said, it feels so personal. And it's exactly what Chris said, because it just, she's like, because I know you even more, it just feels like a personal session. Cause I've given her like live Reiki sessions. Um, and then Re um, Reiki people that have come to our classes, they're like, wow, a lot of the young people like it. But another woman just recently said exactly what you said. They're like, I can't do that. 
I'm like, I can't either. I'm like, stop it. Yeah. I can't edit all, all, all those snacks, but some people <laughs> like it. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. interesting. Well, so I know we do have to kind of get going, but, um, or Colleen, I saw you unmute. So sorry. Oh, well, the other thing that I, I would just like a little more clarification on is the word trigger, because it sounds like the, in this context, the word trigger is what elicits that positive response. Whereas often in healing work, we think of what has triggered an emotional trauma, you know, so I'd just like to kind of clarify the, the word trigger in this context. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. And an important point to, to note. Yeah. So the, the notion of trigger within ASMR is not necessarily a positive concept, although in most cases it will be, but it is the thing that induces a physiological reaction in the person on the other side, the viewer, whereas uh, trigger in a, a clinical setting and in the, the literature, you know, is, as you described, is most often the term used to uh, imply that something about what I, as the clinician, is bringing to the table is inducing a negative psychical or emotional reaction in the, the, per, the client or the person People on the other People say side. triggers or tingles. They'll, it means the same thing in ASMR. A lot of people were like, I haven't had tingles in so long until I watched your video, you know, or like, these were some great triggers, your hands. Oh my gosh, your hands, your hands. Some people just like the hand stuff. Mm -hmm. so. I think there's a, a kind of philosophical direction that I'd love to run with in regards to the multiple meanings of trigger, you know, because both rely on shared experience in a way that there's not a, there's not enough of. And I think Reiki, one of the things that I love about Reiki, but also the Reiki community is that um, Reiki practitioners and clients, you know, everyone interested in Reiki has a, a, a prioritizes or understands the value of shared experience. And I, I think that's one of the things that ASMR is, I don't know if this is intentional so much as it's just kind of a byproduct of humans trying to heal themselves in the ways that w we can asmr you know is prioritizing shared experience also but that means there's a level of vulnerability that's required in order for it to happen so uh, and in this way i'm not a, a psychologist or anything of the sort but it in that clinical space you know everyone has to respect that space as a as a kind of third space you know a, a liminal space where in order to get the good stuff you gotta you gotta open yourself up a bit and sometimes that's going to be a positive thing and other times it's not going to be um maybe it'll be positive but doesn't feel good and then other times it might feel good but not be so good in the end either you know so in that regard trigger it's kind of fitting to me that trigger would have this uh, dual meaning that we have to make sense of. That does make a lot of sense. And um, I also really like the term shared experience because that can go anywhere from a, just a shared experience on one level, all the way to the way you described your childhood experience of your haircut as intimacy and nurturing and a feeling of closeness. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm curious about when we're talking about this, whether it is in the positive or in the times where we are actually releasing the, um, you know, the, the less than nice triggers, um, <clears throat> Reiki, and those can, it's not like it's, you know, always combined with Reiki that m makes this difference, but I would be curious as you, from your perspective with combining with it, it with Reiki, because Reiki, it's like when you let go of something, it helps to heal it. Like the energy itself helps to heal it. 
And at the same time, it also moves us more into our more and more into our authentic selves. So using the energy and the positive aspects of the triggers to also reveal more and more of the authentic self. And so you, both of your perspectives on how and why, I guess, but you know, using the, the combination of the two. Yeah, um, I'm trying to, I guess I'll start. So you're asking like, using the combination of the two, how that's healing. Maybe, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I talk about sure. that. I talk about that in my intro a lot. Using ASMR and Reiki and combining them is a really powerful healing tool that assists your body in your body's own healing process. What I believe and what I teach with my mom and the students, what I really do feel that what happens with Reiki is that we're the conduit, the Reiki flows through us, it connects into the person, and when the Reiki goes into the body, it actually, it, 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 the Reiki knows where to go, the Reiki knows where to flow, but it activates and sometimes you feel people feel things in their body. Like I touched my daughter the other day. I was, I put my hands on her feet and I was doing Reiki on her. And she's like, mom, I just felt pain shoot through my hand. We're releasing. I mean, I would say that's a trigger, um, a good trigger, an ASMR trigger, a, a body's response to the medicine, right? But your bot, the Reiki goes into the body. It activates a remembrance of how to heal ourselves. And so I feel like the tingles, I get them, I'm getting them right now because I, I resonate so much with it. When I get the tingles, I'm like, oh, that's truth. Um, tingles are also, you know, what you get in a Reiki session. You'll get the chills through your body, whether you're giving it or getting it. Buzzing, you know, all this stuff are triggers in the body of your body's response to activating healing, the healing process. I mean, I don't, and I think that's the way to say it. Uh, but yeah, I think that, but with ASMR, I don't know, it's like a performance sound visual thing that people can connect to on a computer screen on, on this, because it's not, it's not touching. It's like a way to feel like it's touching you. I mean, we go into these like VR things, or we have the binaural beats, you know, these are all like different healing kind of ways or modalities that, um, we can feel like we're with somebody in person. Yeah. I think it, anytime we're combining seemingly different things, it's going to require, I, not require, but it's going to at times force uh, a kind of confrontation with our understanding of what those things are. And, and that is really resonating with me with, from your question in that, Combining ASMR with Reiki means that there will have to be some sort of trade-off or, or our conceptions of what each of those things are will, will be augmented. So there might be some folks who think of the energy that's being transmitted through ASMR as of the same sort as what Reiki energy is. There might be other folks who uh, want to maintain a, a, a hard line between them. Um, I tend to think of ASMR as a kind of um, preparatory experience that helps the, the Reiki energy not work better because Reiki energy just, it works. It's, uh, but it, it helps to induce a calm disposition in in the the viewer or the the client so that we and i'll include myself here um, we will be more receptive to reiki energy or to shared experience i i, I don't know if i would conflate those two things either that reiki energy and shared experience it's not as if i'm saying that simply sharing an experience is somehow what is working when Reiki works, but there's, I'd say something that is therapeutic, something that is healing, simply uh, 
involving a, a shared experience, understanding that when we open ourselves up to the exchange of energy with another person, we're doing something that helps to align our health and our well being towards the rest of all that is. That's How that plays out, I don't know. Go ahead, Kelly. That's the exact right thing. I was just, you reminded me of like, I'm sure a lot of people in this podcast and y'all especially have heard Laurel's pillar of light. Like that's, that's almost what it is. It's like a different type of meditation, but it's, it's, it's taking you into the experience, you know, where you're not having to go to a VR place or put on 3d glasses or it's taking you YouTube is a, is an amazing platform where you can use all this stuff and combine them so that you can actually go through this experience and experience health and well-being and healing that's really really powerful and that's one reason we started this it's like how can I, I i kept asking myself how can i do sessions on like more than just one person at a time and i go back and i can't, i'm like i can't believe i asked that question and then it started happening it's like, oh, that's how it works. That's how it works. For me, at least. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, a method of delivering the energy that is going to resonate with people and anybody who's called to ASMR. Um, so yeah, that's really that's really interesting. I'd say that sleep, the preponderance of sleep interest, interest in sleep sessions in ASMR Reiki. Uh, speaks to a, another version of the same kind of thing you know that sleep is so important to this genre because sleep is so important and in such short supply so even at a macro level you know thinking about all like humans working or thinking in group like group activity group think you know like that there would be a, a such a, a large interest in sleep sessions means that we're healing ourselves through the prioritizing of what we need in order to even heal in other ways, right? If we don't have rest, then we're, we're not going to be able to do all of the other things that we're capable of doing. And kind of on another note that I meant to say before, too, that's like another way it's healing. The, the population of men that are watching ASMR Reiki is like astounding. I mean, they're asking about, it. they're asking questions about it. They're coming and watch, even if they don't know what Reiki is, ASMR is bringing them to it. That's really interesting. It brought Chris to it. A lot of the population of Reiki in general is women. And so, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah all, you know. it's mostly women, but like yeah. on this channel, it's, we probably have a, a smaller, more, like more portion of men. Really? Like a little, like might be like 53% men. And then, you know. Yeah. Interesting. Men. Yeah. Cause but like, I mean, obviously it's cause of who we are too, but on ours, it's like 95% yeah. women. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Totally. Interesting. And I know. I'm always like, wow, all these men, they're, yeah. like, they're so interested in it. I mean, it's really, it's fun. Yeah. That, I thinking in terms of the gender dynamic, I, I can't help but think of where my own thinking and behavior was before I was exposed to Reiki and ASMR and mindfulness more generally, but like where I was before and where I am now, I wish I could bring all of my male counterparts with me to where I am, you know, because I'm, I'm better able to be a partner. I'm better able to be a citizen, you know, like I have a, more space in order to, uh, be uh, empathetic towards women's issues, women's concerns, my interactions with my mother, my, my sister, you know, every, all of that has been positively impacted by my interest in Reiki. And, and I absolutely love that there's such an interest uh, from men in ASMR Reiki as this genre that we're talking about online and i think it has everything to do with the way that very uh, like very many men young people older people it doesn't matter 
still don't feel like there's a space for us to be our fullest emotional selves. And, and this offers a platform, you know, you're by yourself and you're feeling like you're sharing in an experience. It's not sexualized. It's not transactional. You know, it's not like I'm here to get something from you. I'm here to recreate that feeling where I was safe and I was taken care of. And that's something that basically doesn't exist for men in our Western environment, in our Western culture at all. If you're not sexualizing women, or if you're not asking something of women in a transactional way, like make me food or this or that sort of thing, what, where is it that a man can come and feel um, vulnerable in a way that reminds us of the full expression of uh, our emotions? You know, there are very few of those spaces. And I think this is one of those, one of those places. That makes sense too, because the majority of viewers on YouTube is men at this point. I, I know that that's shifting. Makes sense that it they're able to do it in these these spaces, like you were both saying. Yeah, really interesting. So, is ASMR um, mostly expressed on video and watched on video? Yes. Yes, um, but me and Chris have talked about different ways to do stuff live at some point, you know? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I mean, we've, we've kind of been tossing ideas around as we go. That's a great thought, too, and question, because that's another innovative turn to take it. Yeah, we, we've talked about how, you know, I, like I was mentioning a few minutes ago, like how combining these things impacts both of these things on their own terms. So what would an ASMRized, what would like a, an ASMR infused Reiki session look like in real life? And it, there, a few years ago, uh, Vox or Vice, I don't remember who, uh, did a, a story about in real life ASMR um, salons, I think they were being called. I don't know if they still exist, but places in Brooklyn, you know, like, bleeding edge culture spaces were starting to um, bring it like bring in um, physical experiences that would recreate the thing that's been happening only online but what this the same kind of impact um, or the same kind of opportunity rather could happen with the reiki session like what would reiki look like if the, there was um if we prioritized receptivity, I know, Kelly Jean, your, your mom Jenny, does it so wonderfully uh, that that is like making sure that the, the space where the session is happening is conducive to, to yeah. calm, you know, uh, you jump in. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say I've started just naturally doing it in my sessions. I will I mean, we all do our sessions so differently, right? But I do Karuna in all my sessions. And I feel like that's a trigger for people because they say it's like otherworldly when they when they hear it. And I, I feel it too, because I go to a different place. And sometimes I'll go around their head because this is like going back and forth on each side is like you're, you're aligning the right and left brain hemispheres. It's like a binaural beat. And sometimes I'll do rubbing of hands. It's just gentle sound stuff that gets people into a different place, <laughs> you know, because people can come in that they don't know you that are nervous or might feel uncomfortable, but there's different things you can do like that. Um, using ASMR techniques that really put them into a nice, comfortable, trance-like <laughs> sleep. Um, yeah. Yes. Oh, go no, ahead. No, no, it just, it's getting me thinking. Her question is really great about <laughs> ASMR live, and it's like making my wheels turn again. And yeah. Like, Ooh, I have some ideas. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Well, enchanting the Corona symbols is also what you were mentioning. Yeah. So working it's, that way. It totally, it's, it's so powerful for me. I did, um, I practiced Nichiren Buddhism for almost 10 years in LA very, very active in that. In Nichiren Buddhism, we chant nam myoho renge kyo And we also do Gosho, where we're, we're, we're like um, 
chanting like two chapters of the Lotus Sutra. And I would chant these to my, to Elle, you know, to my baby. And like when she was little and, and I, I've always chanted. The reason I got into this type of Buddhism because I went to a yoga retreat and during my training of Hatha yoga many years ago in Chicago, and we chanted and we, ch I chanted so hard that I got so high and I mean, like, I was on like an LSD trip high. I mean, it was like, I, I went to my teacher. I'm like, I feel like I'm on drugs. I was so happy for at least like 20 minutes, like unconditionally, joyfully happy because I was chanting this mantra. And I had realized that, you know, all the, the water in our body is vibrating towards this mantra. All my cells are changing. And that's why I was like, I went to LA and I met my friend Larry and I was like, you're chanting. I want to go chant. So he took me and I, I chanted for years trying to get back to that place. And I did, I, I did, but I also was hearing tones because I'm a voice artist. I, I was hearing tones in it, but it wasn't really like people didn't do that in that practice. It was like one chant, num yo ring, yo num yo ring, you know, but I was hearing other stuff. And so when Karuna came along, I was like, I started playing with it, the musicality of it, and playing with the sounds and the words and stretching them out and making them shorter and making them, breaking them up so that they, when it, when I put it in my body, I wrote it on a piece of paper and I wrote my intention and then I started chanting it. And I was like, I could feel the vibration in my body again. And I was like, oh, I feel really good. I'm like, oh, like I could feel the vibration. Um, so. I feel like it's a really powerful tool. And if we can somehow combine this <laughs> and like heal people with it, like, let's do it. Like, it's so fun. It, it feels good in my body. It's like when you give a Reiki session, you're giving yourself a Reiki session. So yeah, that's what it feels like every time we do these ASMR videos, usually it's like, I'm like, oh, I feel pretty good because I feel like I just give a Reiki session. When I feel like it went smooth and went well, it's like, oh, okay. I feel it. This is good. So you receive as you give. Yes. Receive yeah. And I'm not talking about that. It's like benefit. It goes both ways. Like I'm getting a benefit and you're, you are. Mm -hmm. You can't help it. Yeah. You'd said that there's a lot of young people, which is what I've, you know, observed with ASMR, that there's a, generally a lot of young people that um, are uh attracted to it or in using it in their own life and their own healing. So is that something that you've noticed in your audience and, or Big just time. in the ASMR community? Big time. It's, it's so many young people and the people that I know personally, and I tell them that I have a channel, they're like, Oh, ASMR. I love ASMR. I use it every night to sleep. And then I'll, I'll give them my channel and they'll get back to me with, with I've had some such the best kindest words. It's like people, like he said in the beginning, the community is really, really thoughtful. And it's like, they, they're so thankful. <laughs> How can you not be too? It's like, that's what Reiki does. You add on that Reiki to it, or you add on ASMR, whatever, whichever way it goes. It's, um, it's so powerful. The students that come through our classes, I tell them that we, I have an ASMR channel and always the young people. 30s and below know what I'm talking about. It's that's that's the range. So it's fun. I think uh, based on our YouTube data, I think about 40% of the audience is 25 to 35. 40% 40 is 35 to 45, and then or 16 or so percent are 16 to 24. And so I think ASMR would skew uh, much younger than Reiki, but the audience in general, I think is um, on the younger side, usually. And that the, the interest from young people in ASMR is, I think, both therapeutic, it's kids reaching out to the spaces where they know they can get the things that they need. I think that's a huge, I can't say that enough uh, about this phenomenon, but the other thing is they're also always interested in the weirdest trigger. They, they just, in a, you know, as kids are want to, to do, they're curious. And so they're like, well, this thing that is completely annoying in real life, will it make me feel positive and good uh, in this venue? And so 
It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. Well, and in the younger generations, generally healing is more accepted. Therapy is more mainstream, you know, the different ways of, of healing. So it makes sense that if those things aren't attainable in their life, that they would, you know, seek it in the places that are easy to come by. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, and they're um, interested in higher consciousness and developing skills in higher consciousness way younger than my generation. You know, we kind of started in our, some of us, the, the early ones of us started really in our 40s, but we also see it quite a bit later, even the idea that there, there was an ability to develop skills and find ways to, um, to actually access your own higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. I, I think it is absolutely remarkable that yeah. and, and this is uh, weird to think about too because in so many ways the, the we're experiencing a moment when truth is contested you know like everyone has their angle on what is a fact and what is not a fact and i don't mean to get topical or political i mean it in a big picture kind of way like there's a certain opportunity that has unfolded that we're seeing play out in young people especially what you just described i think brilliantly captures it is that young people are going to move in the direction of their well-being and they're able to you know they know they can trust that they can't really turn to any of the older people to tell them definitively what is this or what is that and so they're able to be free in a way that i don't know if we've really experienced or seen uh, from any generation until the, I guess these last two, the, the ones that have kind of lived and been inundated with the online space where they're going to go with what feels good. And sometimes it's going to make us grimace. But in this case, it's it's opening up new possibilities for us tapping into uh, our possibilities, you know, in a in a metaphysical kind of way, higher levels of consciousness. Well, in our, my own theory, our own theory, too, is you know, in my age group, I'm 65. So in my age group, you know, I was definitely born into the age of the outer authority. Like you say, telling you this is what you believe, here's how you behave, children should be um, seen and not heard, mm -hmm. and all of those, that generational, and really, I think longer than generational, we're talking about thousand, you know, however many, however many centuries of the outside authority being in the, um, the primary collective consciousness. And now what we're seeing is the age of the inner authority and the inner teaching and an independent thought and finding your way and so as a person of my generation, I believe that that's what I, I can do at this point is contribute those safe places for mm -hmm. that development of the inner authority and the, you know, building that, that foundation of possibility um, for this generation coming in because we're in the infancy of it. Mm -hmm. and wow. new development new ways new skills new understanding and so it's it's a time where i consider conversations like this is what we can do to contribute to those possibilities the opportunities um, for finding ways of healing but also empowerment Mm -hmm. uh, these, you know, younger generations are empowered to develop their inner truth and their inner authority and discover it and really be able to live in that. Wow. So it's new, yeah. new opportunities for that. all of us. Mm -hmm. I think I fully agree. And I think one thing that we're doing, all of us, in whatever healing modalities that we're doing is like we're giving them that permission. Yeah. to 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 go there to have that and i i always try to make that point too in in a lot of my sessions doing the asmr is that 
like you you can't you showed up for yourself and that is that that's that's where it's at you you set that intention for yourself to be here and that's extremely powerful and the reiki immediately starts working you set that you you're like i'm gonna go watch a reiki video reiki's like boom i'm there <laughs> you know so well um, and i do i do believe that is the kind of original intention of Reiki energy from the energy itself mm -hmm. is to help us develop our own inner truth mm -hmm. to yeah. find it for ourselves because it isn't based on an outside authority. It is opening the possibilities for all the different various ways, like, you know, how you are combining it with the ASMR and in our own cases, you know, my, my, early training was uh, shamanism and mm -hmm. of course my earliest training in Catholicism and as we see all of it blending together in a lifetime um, yeah. and yeah. at this point it's it's for me it's so exciting to see this this change and this happening and I feel like it's you know now from this perspective, looking back and reflection, I can see that that has been, for me, really my life's journey of finding my own inner truth first, and that it was possible. And like you say, that freedom to pursue it. Um, and then, you know, helping to just build a foundation of safety for that. And skill building and ways and methods and modalities and all the different ways that it can you know can connect to different people through their own interest mm -hmm. and curiosity and resonance of how what what particular things work for them mm -hmm. so asmr to me is really fascinating and i'm i'm so excited to have a, a deeper understanding of it um, because some of it i've I, you know, I even remember my oldest granddaughter who's 15 now, but her starting with um, when she was doing slime yeah, and everything me. was about the sound. Did you hear that sound? And it's so satisfying. Mm -hmm. And you hear the kids saying it's so satisfying. I love, I love that. Yeah. And so it's, it's just hearing all these different ways. It's, it's, I, I absolutely am endlessly fascinated by it and love it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's definitely helped the the definitely helps Reiki evolve yeah. and it helps my practice all the time. It's just helped to expand because I'm creating new ways of doing things differently in my live sessions and when I teach live as well. So it's fun to explore. Um, I have a couple of technical questions about it. It is, is it something that you have to be trained in? And then, you know, as far as um, like the YouTube side of things, you know, is that difficult? Can kind of anyone do that? Um, some of those kinds of questions. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I think, yes, anyone can do that and I, I would encourage everyone to explore it at YouTube as a as a space to at the very least um leave some footprints for the, for the sake connected to really what Colleen you were describing in the way of the kind of awakening or in, initiations that are made possible through the online space it's it's not really like there's a wall that's separating in real life from the online space anymore, uh, if there ever was. And so, yeah, the, the more the merrier, both on YouTube, but just in other spaces where you can um, have a, a Reiki practice flourish. And, and I think that is really important to note. Technically, sometimes though, it can be a real bear. I was, uh, I was wondering that. It's a real that. pain in the butt. I'm sure I, uh... you guys experienced that with the podcast. Oh there. Gosh. It's so different though, the sound that you have to create, yeah. how close you have to get them. I mean, we yeah. experience the podcast and it's a lot easier medium than mm. 
I would think. I mean, I don't know. So I'm. It's I'm trial just a- and error. Oh my yeah. gosh! Mm-hmm. Like it, it, Chris has been so calm with me <laughs> because I'm like, ah, the mics didn't work, or they weren't on, and then the camera wasn't focused, and then sometimes even like we were uploading our most recent video, and there was like this, I don't even staticky sound. It's almost mm-hmm. like when you're your earphones are kind of like kind of broken and there's like we're like what is that what is that coming through so there's always a challenge um but we had a first channel called just this asmr life and we had that for about two months we launched it in may um into may and we had it for about two and a half months and we really learned a lot and got all the kinks out and then we're like let's wipe it clean let's start over and so we created this asmr Reiki life created a new logo and um we've gotten so much better we're we like upped our game and yeah so it's been um technically it's been a journey <laughs> yeah we, we try for every video to be better than the previous video and that's kind of a, a general late motif for youtubers you know they yeah. it, the the mantra from a lot of youtube uh aficionados i guess is um just start posting, start making videos and, and improve as you go. And I think that's certainly how we do it. And um, a- every video presents its own challenges, but working with Kelly Jean has been fantastic and, and a lot of fun and inspiring for me because she's just such a wonderful artist. So she's formally trained in, in theater and, and in, uh, the other other spaces as well and so like giving and receiving direction is really fun so the subtleties and the nuances are why i'm talking in about the direction piece because on one video or one attempt at a video she might be using certain I don't know, hand triggers that need to be tweaked in order to be effective and so uh, we'll talk about that and, and it's fun to see uh, the, the evolution of the ASMR presentation of, of Reiki uh, in her. He's, he's my tingle tester. So. I was going to ask about that. Mm-hmm. How do you he's, know what the triggers he, are he, when you're yeah. using new things? He'll, he'll, I, I just go with what I feel because I'm an artist. I've, I've been doing this since I was uh, 18. And even before that, imp- I do, I did improv forever in Chicago. Um, I'm just improvising, but I'm improvising what feels good to me. <laughs> I would correct that to say, I don't think you're improvising so much as you're channeling. And that's an important point. That's why I'm. But I, I think that's the same. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Yeah, I think that's the channeling. same as improvisation. I mean, you basically oh. start with nothing and you just end up like okay i'm i'm in a restaurant <laughs> i don't know like here we go you know i think that um you were asking something your question going back to your question robin you said technically and then oh anybody can do it mm-hmm. and i think that anybody i i used to say that about voiceover when i would be teaching voiceover or doing voiceover stuff i think everybody has a voice and so the more practice that you have at something, the better you get at something. I, I've been able to pull different things out of people's voices that think that they can't do much with it. And I'm like, you can, <laughs> you actually really can. And so doing ASMR, it's like, watch some videos. What can you do? What's your thing? You don't have to do Reiki. You could do some other kind of ASMR if you want to do it. I've seen um, young kids doing different ASMR stuff, just practicing it. Um, and they're like, they'll like pick up a piece of paper, you know, and they'll be like, I've seen like young people, like 11 years old doing ASMR. It's really cute because they're like practicing their own way of doing it. And that's all it is. It's practice. Just like Reiki, you develop a relationship with Reiki as you go every day. It's like a different relationship. You're building something different and every video is different for us. Sometimes they flow really well, and then sometimes they don't when you have dogs barking or kids stomping and coughing or a plane flying over, and you're like, oh my gosh, today is like the day of uh, challenges and obstacles. <laughs> so um, there's, it's always different, but it's worth it. It's worth it in the end when you release that video and people come back and they're like, 
this has helped me so much. This yeah, has healed my back. This healed my headache. This, you know, um, my friend recently, she was like, I've never listened to it. She's like, but I just put your video on and I had a migraine and I woke up and it was gone. So she fell asleep just subconsciously listening to Reiki for the pain relief. I think it was a pain relief video actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's so many topics you can do too. With yeah, it's, so you, it's been you, really cool to ahead. see the, the community that's being built, uh, organized around the channel, where uh, a whole lot of people feel a sense of a buy in into what Kelly Jean is doing. And I, th I think it's absolutely incredible that yeah. it's, it's bigger than her channel or, or her specifically. Yeah. yeah, it's growing pretty fast, too, which is like, oh, wow, this is actually really interesting. <laughs> people like this. <laughs> yeah so then you when you do your videos you set a specific intention for that session yeah i i always set an intention i think on the the one we were we were testing out something different on a recent one for just a sleep session my intention obviously was for them to sleep but i i always set an intention i usually have um a candle and i'll light the candle with fire and I'll write an intention and I'll set the intention. Rubbing the candle as a trigger and showing the light and have them look into the flame. So yeah, it's super fun. I feel like it. Yeah, I so, be so creative with it. There's like all these different things. I'm like, oh, all good. the combinations and the yeah. intentions. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, options there. It was hard at first. It was really hard to do you multitask with things and and be reading a script because i don't memorize the scripts i kind of channel i'll have like a script that i kind of go back and look at for different things and then i just let it flow but there's been times where it's just like it's a lot of things to juggle but i'm getting back i'm much better at it now <laughs> it took me a minute and i was a diva i'll say that many times because chris knows where i was like <gasps> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I think um, if you want to just kind of say all of the places that we can reach you again. Um, and um, yeah, why don't you go yeah. ahead and say that again? Um, you know, we are, I have started a Patreon account, but I haven't launched it. Um, we are almost to monetizing our channel. Um, we just started this channel into September. And so we're almost at a thousand subscribers and um, we have plenty of watch time hours. So once that's set at a thousand, I think we're at 850 or around that right now, then I'm going to launch our Patreon. So be on the lookout for that. It'll be the name, this ASMR Reiki Life. And you can find that on YouTube. And if you want to look up more about what we do with my mom, um, we are at thepeaceroom.love in Boise, Idaho. And we have so many classes coming up. At, um, I'm sure, as, like, at, um, Colleen, I know you're doing some of the class, same classes as my mom, too. I'm like, I love that we're both, like, in the West. We're, like, taking over the West. It's so beautiful. We're, like, we've got, it's, like, good energy this whole way. Um, so we have that, and we have a Reiki spa on january 14th for anyone that's in town we do i combine my healing modalities with another gal and we do crystal bowls and she does reflexology and i do karuna and i do reiki treatments and we do a little yoga and we do drumming um so yeah we combine a lot of that stuff what else am i missing um just your how if they want to have a session with you or contact you yeah you can yeah. book on uh the peace room love you can find me there and book a session you can do a distant session as well or you can contact me at this asmr life at gmail.com or my name kelly jean badgley at gmail.com and um yeah you can book a session either live i do a lot of distant sessions as well um, I do them a little differently, but if people want to Zoom ASMR, we can do that too. It just depends on what they're used to. Um, I'm trying to think what else. So, yeah. And Badgley is 
B A D G L E Y. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that that is Colleen. Is there anything that I'm missing? You're muted. You're muted. Still muted. And then <laughs> Chris's contact information or. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. Uh available at Christopher Driscoll PhD.com. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. And there you can find out a bunch about the books I've written and things like that. I'd love uh, for folks to pick up a copy of, of a book or two if they wanted. Um, but go to this ASMR Reiki life, uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And, and even if uh, you're not feeling the, the video at the time, say when it might pop up, like it if you if you can and just yeah help it support the channel. the channel yeah that's that's what i mean so and that's something I, I talk about too is that like just by you being here just by you liking it even if you shared it it's like doing it's like we're all here as a collective mm -hmm. and it's a rippling effect of healing and peace just through liking it just by you being here you raising your vibration is raising the vibration around you yeah. um, so yeah. Come on over. Check us out. <laughs> right. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you, so thank much. you both so much for being here and just really fascinating conversation and really glad to get to know more about ASMR and of course, thank both you. of you as well. Yeah. It's really, I feel you. like I learned so much about it and now I can reflect on many of the videos I've watched that actually are ASMR and then some of them that I'm sure are unintentional ASMR yeah. as well. And how that, and so now I feel like I can really um, observe it more. And also that idea that uh, there, there are certain practices of it that I'm going to resonate with and others that I don't. And yeah. practitioners or, or ASM artists, um, you know, that I resonate with. So that makes a lot more sense and uh, gives me a lot more interest in investigating it. And of course, AMSR with Reiki, mm -hmm. yeah. how great is that? Yeah, at, at the very least, it's enabling um, so many young people to be exposed to Reiki in a way that they, they probably wouldn't otherwise be exposed to. Yeah. And I think that's really exciting. Yeah, really exciting. Well, again, awesome. for, for that generation to have new avenues of, of really finding their ways of accessing their higher consciousness that they're so interested in. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and for Colleen and I, you can find us at ReikiLifestyle.com. Um, the social medias is all... Reiki Lifestyle or Robin Benelli Reiki. So you can find us there. Uh, everybody kind of knows that, that listens. <laughs> so and our YouTube channel too. YouTube, YouTube <laughs> so. channels, Reiki Lifestyle. Reiki. So yeah, find yeah. us under Reiki Lifestyle. Yes. All right. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Um, much love to you all. And thank you to Kelly Jean and Christopher. Uh, thank thank you. you so much. Thank you, Robin. What a Kelly. great conversation. Yeah. All right. Look forward Bye, to seeing y'all again, maybe in Sedona next year. I look oh, so. oh, yeah. The Sedona Reiki retreat. Yeah. yeah. That's the best. We'll definitely be there. Maybe when we're in, Bo you know, come to Boise too. So you have family. Yes. Because cool. you're only six hours away. Yeah. Yes. That's and I'm sure we'll have Raven right. Keys back. So she's yeah. amazing. So. Oh, we she's had her. so fun too. We just, we just had did her a podcast with her. Yeah, last oh, week nice. yeah, we released nice. her episode. She's the, she's so really cool. Great. She's really cool. Agreed. All right. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.